Uh, hello there, Steve here in Sydney of the Lay Gnosis website, truebluehealer.com. I'm going to show you a two and a half minute video clip of a, of a fascinating subject. It's um, a very disproportionate debating match between William Lane Craig and a flyweight atheist called Richard Dawkins. And they're, going to, they're talking about uh, the cosmological argument, the case for the existence of God. That is based on the Big Bang, the redshift, uh, the expanding universe, and thus it must have had a beginning simply by extrapolating back in time. Amazingly, Richard Dawkins, in this two and a half minute video clip, is quoted as saying from his God Delusion book that he's got really no disagreement at all with the Big Bang being requiring to have an omnipotent, om omniscient being, all powerful, all knowing, and, and a few more uh, divine qualities. You see, he's got no truck with that at all. Um, and William Lane Craig, deprived of any decent substance of argument, um, to go up against, basically accuses uh, Dawkins of not even being a decent atheist, which is, um, <laughs> this is kind of like a ridiculous mismatch of intellects. Uh, Dawkins just hasn't got what it takes to even put up a decent argument and to even act like a decent atheist. Now, Dawkins supplies all these requirements around the, the creator of the universe, and then he says he laments the fact that it doesn't seem to show up on planet Earth much uh, and lists all the reasons why and how they don't seem to turn up, such as reading people's minds, uh, omniscience, etc., uh, responding to people's thoughts, responding to prayers, etc. So I'm going to show you how you can actually prove that that, that is true and Dawkins hasn't got a clue at what he's talking about. Um, and you can prove it in just uh, a few days. But first of all, I'll show you this wonderful two and a half minute video clip of William Lane Craig, a wonderful superstar debater, theologian and a philosopher, literally deprived of a decent atheist to debate with. Here it is. So this argument, if successful, leads to the existence of a personal creator of the universe who is uncaused, beginningless, changeless, immaterial, timeless, spaceless, and unimaginably powerful. Now, Dawkins does address this version of the cosmological argument. Remarkably, however, he doesn't dispute either premise of the argument. Instead, all he questions is the theological significance of the argument's conclusion. He writes, and I quote, even if we allow the dubious luxury of arbitrarily conjuring up a terminator to an infinite regress and giving it a name, there is absolutely no reason to endow that terminator with any of the properties normally ascribed to God. Omnipotence, omniscience, goodness, creativity of design, to say nothing of human attributes, such as listening to prayers, forgiving sins, and reading innermost thoughts. Now, this is an amazingly concessionary statement. Dawkins doesn't dispute that the argument successfully proves the existence of an uncaused, beginningless, changeless, immaterial, timeless, spaceless, unimaginably powerful, personal creator of the universe. He merely complains that this personal creator hasn't also been shown to be omnipotent, omniscient, good, creative of design, listening to prayers, forgiving sins, and reading innermost thoughts. To which I say, so what? The argument wasn't designed to prove those sorts of things. In fact, it would be a bizarre form of atheism, in fact, an atheism not deserving the name, that believes that there is an uncaused, beginningless, changeless, immaterial, timeless, spaceless, unimaginably powerful, personal creator of the universe, who may, for all we know, also have all of the properties listed by Dawkins. Now, we don't have to call this personal creator of the universe God if Dawkins thinks that that's unhelpful. But nevertheless, the point remains that a being 
such as I have described, does exist as a result of this argument, and Dawkins never disputes the point. And so there you've seen uh, the intellectual fireball, the most entertaining man, Mr. William Elaine Craig, uh, sorely deprived of a decent opponent because effectively um, Dawkins' argument from his own God delusion is a surrender to the fact that the cosmological argument, the Big Bang, um, requires, and he just quietly accepts the fact uh, that there is some kind of divine creator behind it all. And Dawkins' only uh, complaint is that it doesn't seem to be here on planet Earth much. And uh, you can see that he's being terribly unscientific there because he's really saying, well, he's seen no evidence of it in his own personal reality. So therefore, it's not on the planet. Well, that is completely wrong. Um, there's many, many examples of interventions of a divine kind. And I'm going to pick them out of the listing that Mr. Dawkins has agreed with. There's a few of them which are readily, readily demonstrable in just two or three weeks. Uh, omniscience, uh, goodness, listening to prayer, reading one's innermost thoughts, and I'm going to throw in a bonus, a physical signals to show you that you're not just imagining these things and they're not your mind just talking to itself. Okay, now, I've picked out those simple ones that were in red on the uh, yellow panel listing uh, listed by Dr. Craig some three times during that mini debate session, two and a half minutes. Now, the actual physical location of this divine creator is actually within yourself, often called the divine spark, but it dwells as a silent partner within you, waiting for you to wake up. It's across every thought you have, but generally won't betray its presence unless there's uh, some kind of emergency where you have what's called an angel experience, a guardian angel experience. And uh, the silent partner, the divine spark, breaks its normal rule of silence to give you a warning. It can be a spoken word, a sound, get out of the way, uh, a truck whizzes past you and, you and it misses you by six inches, or it can be a messaging dream, stay away from those people, don't go there today, that sort of thing. People have these uh, guardian angel experiences and treasure them for decades and don't understand them. Churches can't explain them, but it's simply fleeting gnosis. And what we do is we can go to a website and we can get this fleeting gnosis made permanent in the form of layman's gnosis. That means for everybody. And you go there and uh, biochemical switch closure takes place in your self. It takes only 20 minutes. There is a formal lesson on how it all works and why you'll be given immediate physical evidence that it's not just a mind exercise. Um, within seven days, you'll have some vivid messaging dreams. And uh, within 10 days, you'll get some distinct physical signals uh, to emphasize the fact that you're not imagining this. It's not just mind games, okay? Within three to four months, you're going to have a messaging internal voice speaking to you. It's as simple as that. Now, this is what biblical heroes had in biblical times. Um, many of the uh, heroes in the Bible with their messaging dreams and internal voices and having wisdom and confidence way beyond the norm were simply that because they were Gnostics and they had additional input from their, uh, the divine spark within them, which is also in you, waiting to be released, waiting to be triggered, okay? Can be done for free in 20 minutes at our website, truebluehealer.com. Honestly, I still can't get over that video. Claude Dawkins, the world's leading atheist, surrenders to William Lane Craig, to the theist position, and then expresses regret that he hasn't met God. Essentially, that's what he actually means. No evidence on planet means he doesn't know about it. So he would actually like to know God. Um, most surprising. I'll also point out to you, William Lane Craig is not a Gnostic either. Otherwise, he would have told you about it in no uncertain terms. So you can beat the great doctor, William Lane Craig, into a state of Gnosis. It takes only 20 minutes to trigger this state of Gnosis. It's free. Physical evidence is immediately supplied. Do remember that. 
Uh, if you are a committed Christian and have uh, a great knowledge of the Bible, guess what the internal mentoring voice is going to do for you? In about three or four months, it will start reading out the Bible to you and explaining the things you didn't really understand. Naturally, there are errors. In a book written thousands of years ago, 